it is, y'all. It is your old boy, Pilk, and I'm coming back with more Damachi today. Guys, last time we had Wargame, you guys asked me for this video, uh, and I didn't have an opportunity, unfortunately, to deliver at that point. But today, I want to talk about the unit settings, those little things above uh, each unit here that say, like, buff, debuff, etc., etc. What do each one of these mean, and how do we decipher them, and what do we decide what we want to use? Um, it's a lot easier than you might think. Let's go ahead and jump in here, and let's just get started, okay? Now, to do so, I'm not actually going to fight this fight, because I... Admittedly, I have been doing the other game a little bit more this weekend. Just because it's the new game, and, you know, we got to rank up. We got to get to the point where we are in this game. So, pardon my rank being a little bit low. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fight somebody that might be a little closer to my level. Uh, I'm going to pick on Spectre just because Spectre might actually own me in this one. We'll see what happens. So... When it comes to the team, now notice when you go to actually fight a team, there's no telling. Yeah, this this team does not bode well for me. We'll see what happens. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Aphrodite scares me a little bit, but that's okay. Um, when it comes to the team, notice it does not tell you your their settings up here. So when I go to trial battle, I can actually see my settings. Now, what do each one of these mean? First of all, your options are balance, attack all, attack one, buff debuff, ailment, and heal. Now, some obvious ones are heal. Obviously, if the opponent, if your unit, case in point, Haruhime here, if she has a good heal skill, she'll utilize that. Now, in the case of this Haruhime, her heal skill is actually, like, pretty much that. But also, uh, this MP heal will also count as a heal. So, I actually don't know. I'd have to test her out. And it'd be actually a good test. Let's put her on the front line. Put her to heal and see what she actually does. Uh, this will result in a failure for me. This is gonna this is gonna be a complete loss. But I really want to see which skill she does. So what we're gonna be looking for, I would imagine she's probably gonna do Dawn Wind first, and then resort to Night Storm. Now, the other one is Blowing Wind. Now, Blowing Wind doesn't necessarily equate to a heal. This is what she would do if she was set to buff uh, or debuff one of the two. Now, let's go ahead and try this out. Let's set her to heal. See what she does and pay very close attention to the attacks she's actually uh, perpetrating. So I'm going to take this down to single speed. Uh, I'm going to turn icons off for this one because I want to see the full attacks. So Dawnwind, as I expected. Okay. We should make it to turn two. Okay. This is probably where I'm going to get eaten alive. And what is she going to do? Or he may... How am I winning this? So as predicted, she did Nightstorm. So there you guys go. That So it will prioritize an MP heal, but it will prioritize the HP heal first. She, she does like the extra skill that does the H. How am I winning this Spectre? Where? All right, disappointed. Actually disappointed in my, in, in my Mang's uh, units. Now to be fair, Aphrodite is coming back now, so... This probably will result in, in uh, no, actually, there you go. Tells you how long Aphrodite hangs on there. So, that's heal. Heal will prioritize the HP heal first, and then the MP heal second. So that does kind of verify that. Now, if they don't have an HP heal or an MP heal, it'll literally just default to balance. Balance is the default setting there. Now, so that's heal. Heal's pretty straightforward. Heal is kind of, you know, like the expected situation. Now, let's go in here and pick on Spectre one more time, just because he deserves it. Can't believe he lost that one. Come on, my man. All right. So, one more time. Going in here. Wait, did he just change up? No, okay. Same team. Sorry, I didn't see Haruhime on the front lines there for a moment. Okay. So, that's heal. Now, what does balance do? Balance is really simple. Balance will basically do skill one, skill two. Now, if they have a third skill that's an AoE, AoE attack, that then will do skill three. But literally, balance is like one, two, three, or one, two. It will always like default to the AoE stats. Pretty straightforward. Now, attack all, you can kind of assume this is going to do the same thing. If your unit has AoE skills, that is going to affect effectively only do the AoE skills. So in this case, notice this is a self skill. Leaf Breath is a self skill uh, with an ally's guard rate. This is all a buff. So I don't believe she'd actually do Leaf Breath. 
What I believe she's going to do set to AoE is she's going to come in here and do Wind Pierce every single time. That's not a bad thing. That means that basically on the first turn, she's going to come in and she's going to wipe out all the opponent's buffs. But to be fair, you don't need that turn one. But let's just set her to AoE and see what happens. Right now she's set to Bounce, so she does skill one, skill two. But let's set her to attack all. Let's see what happens here. Okay, so once again, we're looking for Leaf Breath. That is our, our number one thing we're actually looking for. Okay, let's see what she does. Wind Pierce. So, actually, I take back. Was Wind Pierce the one? I'd have to go look again. I thought Leaf Breath was the one. Let's see what she does, though. Does she do it again in skill two? Wind Pierce again. Okay, so it must have been Wind Pierce that we were looking for. We'll go double check that. Remember, Wind Pierce is what she's doing. Uh, and, you know, like I said, she kind of what she's just going to do is she's going to spam that same skill over and over again. Now, this is obviously going to grant my opponent the win because we haven't done our buffs or anything like that. So, you know, I'm at a definite deficit. She's lacking some of her agility. She's lacking basically some of the stuff that makes her really good. How am I winning this, Spectre? <laughs> How is that possible? Bruh. Bruh, I actually feel bad for picking on his team now, but I know he's a good supporter. Oh, no, here we go. Here we go. This is what I expected. This is actually what I expected. So I'm down to just my healers. So no, he's going to win this one 100%. Because Aphrodite's just going to, she's going to hang in there. Aphrodite's a uh, scrappy one. All right. I just want to hang in here now and see who wins this. I, I get the feeling he's going to win it, especially now that he's got, yeah, there we go. That was that. And with the ESA, I'm going to go ahead and... <laughs> I'm done! Wow, she survived. Well, of course she survived that. She's got the uh, the KO survival. So, there we go. So, that's AoE. That's the attack all setting. So, and just to kind of go back in here and kind of show you one more time. Let's go pick on Spectre one more time. We're one for one now! Alright. So, trial battle. We're going to go back in here. And I'm going to set her back to balance. Now, notice this time... Okay, so Leaf Breath is skill 1, and Wind Pierce is skill 2. So like I said, she's going to default to skill 2. The reason she didn't do skill 3... Actually, I'm surprised she didn't do skill 3. Because skill 3 is an AoE skill. Uh, interesting. I really kind of would have expected her to do Spiral Shot. Um, interesting. I learned something here while making this video. I really kind of thought maybe they just don't default to the third skills only because, but it doesn't really matter. The main thing is notice as predicted, she did win pierce each and every time. Uh, I just had the name of the attacks wrong. So that's what attack all, attack all does. Now, if I go do the balance, then she'll do leaf breath and then she'll do win pierce. So note the, note the major difference of the fight here. There's leaf breath. Now that I have the name of the, the skills correct. And here's Wind Pierce. Now, I don't believe if we get to turn three, I think she's going to do Wind Pierce one more time. I don't, I don't believe she's actually going to do Spiral. Uh, was it Spiral Shot was her third skill? I don't believe she ever actually does that. So I just don't believe they have it coded in here for them to really ever do that unless it's like the main thing. So there's Wind Pierce again. So skill threes are kind of ignored, it seems. Um... Unless you like have a very specific setting for that. Mostly because, generally speaking, skill 3 is a um, is generally a single target attack. So that might be something like, I, I, I call it flawed a little bit. Because really set to AoE, she should be doing skill 3. But I'm going to pick on Spectre. I'm just going to keep on picking on Spectre in this video. Just because I know his opponent is one that, that is tough. Like, he, he has tough teams, generally speaking. So... We have covered balance. Remember, balance is one, two. Uh, attack all. We'll focus on the AOE only attack. Attack one, as stated, will focus on the single target attack. Do I have somebody that does a single target attack? I believe Aisha does. This is going to completely tank my team. So if I set her to single target, she'll do Sword Roar exclusively. Or she should. She should being the operative. Let's take a look. All right. So let's see what happens here. Waiting for Aisha to do her thing. 
Sword Roar, as expected. So, <laughs> it was a good hit. It took out one opponent. It's very, very, very rare that you're actually going to want to use a single target skill on this. You're generally speaking at a major deficit when you do that. Because you really want, especially with Aisha, but you really want with most units to do an AoE skill. Notice that that actually cost me the fight. Because instead of, like, taking out two or three opponents when she struck, she took out one. And it was the sack. <laughs> so, single target skills are not preferable. Now, there are rare situations in which you might actually want to do that. I'm going to go ahead and just back out of this now. There's no point in continuing on this one. This one's going to be a slaughter. But... That's single target. Like I said, very, very, very rarely are you going to utilize that one. That one is pretty uncommon. Now, once again, if you, let's say for the sake of argument, if I have Lily here, let's go put her on attack all. I shall put her on, yeah, put her on attack all. Let's double check here because I don't remember what I said it to before. I could go back and review the video to make sure, but let's see. So her first skill is actually uh, a big debuff, and then she does this big attack. So if I ever set to attack all, she'll basically do a one-two. She'll do some merge and then scatter. We could double check that, but I don't know. I think Lily will will stick to her one-two attack uh, if I have her set to attack one, since she doesn't really have an attack one skill. Now she does have a buff. If I ever set to buff, she'll do this over and over again. We'll actually check that next. So, let's see what she does. She do, should do Leaf Breath and Wind Pierce while Aisha's doing Submersion and Scatter. Let's test this out and let's see. Because I honestly don't know what happens here. Let's take a look. Okay. So, Lily's going to do Wind Pierce. She actually didn't even do... So, she, she defaulted to an attack then. Oh, and actually, Aisha did Scatter there. Interesting. Interesting. Figured she'd do submersion first. Perhaps that's the big difference. Now, I probably would then want to set Aisha to balance, but the main thing is notice that it uh, when you have her set to attack one instead of attack all, it's still defaulted back to attack all, it seems. So it defaulted to the attack skill instead of just going straight to balance, which is strange. Not what I really would have expected, but it is a thing. So, once again, learn something interesting here. This is going to be a slaughter once again, so we're just going to back up. Yes, I will play it through when it's a slaughter in my favor. But when he's going to absolutely decimate me, uh, pride. So, <laughs> so, once again, we just learned that set to attack all. Aisha actually doesn't do her first skill for some reason. She did scatter instead. Now, probably because scatter has this big buff skill with it. So probably what she, and I didn't pay close enough attention whether she did scatter and then submersion. That probably is how it went. But really, I would rather have her set to balance so she does submersion and then scatter. Uh, that's just me, because then it does the debuff and then that. So let's go set her to balance, see what she does. And we'll set Lily back to, I think I had her set to balance as well. Let's see. So we're going to pay attention to Aisha on this one. This is a little bit of testing for me, too, because I haven't paid a huge amount of attention to what Aisha does. So, I really kind of want the debuff and then the big hit. Now, her super physical attack hit is pretty crazy. But I think the debuff will be really nice. So, so let's see. So we're looking for submersion first, and balance should do that. Now, balance might still do her uh, action buff skill. I say action, extra action skill. So, she did do, I was right, she did do submersion first. So that's perfect. And the next turn, she'll do scatter. So if you have, contrary to the, the next skill we're going to talk about, you know, where they do, uh, like Aisha, extra actions on turn two, if you ever set to balance, it will still just do a one-two hit. I believe balance every single time. I don't think there's much of an ex uh, ex exception to it. I believe she always does. They always do one-two. Ooh, we're actually getting, ooh, we must have gotten a good hit in. Actually, I take them back. We probably got charmed is what it was. I didn't pay close enough attention. I was paying attention to what Aisha did. So we probably got charmed here. Mm, okay. Okay. All right. All right. I want to see how this plays out. I'm at a massive deficit, but I've got two healers. Um, with a uh, defensive... Bu okay, now we're done. <laughs> now we're done. Um, 
It just shows you how deadly Aphrodite can be. I'm assuming that's what happened. I don't know for certain, but I'm assuming that's what happened. Once again, I've messed with my team settings so much now, I'm going to have to go back and, like, basically reload the team to know where I had it set. But I'm also learning different things about the units. So we've talked about balance. Balance basically always doing 1-2. Attack all always defaulting to the AoE attack. Will not do buff skills. Attack 1 will always do single target unless there isn't a single target. Then we'll default to attack all. I'm assuming, I'm assuming attack, if you have a single target unit and you set them to attack all, I'm assuming it'll do the same thing. I'm not going to test it. It's so utterly pointless. If you guys really want to see it tested, let me know in the comments. But, I mean, you can test it on your own. I'll be honest with you. Now, we also talked about heal and we talked about what heal does. Ailment is really, really, really easy. If you have someone with an ailment skill, in fact, let me just, for the sake of silliness, let's grab Aphrodite. Where's she at? Where's she at? Where's she at? There she is. Okay. We're going to throw Aphrodite in here. Now, Aphrodite is an interesting unit. All right. So, if I set her to uh, ailment... She should do Bloom Sphere first. Now, to be fair, I don't think she's ever going to go back to Pure Temptation, which is really what we want. My understanding is she'll do Bloom Sphere first, but we'll see if she goes and does Pure Temptation. Let's play this game. Let's find out. Now, I do want her to last, and I don't think I have any equips. Um, let's get that anklet off of her and put her in anti-sleep just to make sure she does her thing. Um, and... No, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm not going to worry about that. So, set her to ailment. And, once again, just to remind myself and remind everyone watching, we want Bloom Sphere and then Pure Temptation. But I bet she's going to spam Bloom Sphere. Let's find out. This is just a little bit of a test for me to see how Aphrodite works with this skill. Because, most of the time... Ooh, and everyone's sealed. Look at that. Love that. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, they're falling too quickly. So turn two. Yeah, they fell too quickly. Let's go target Spectre's team. Uh, I meant to do that actually, but let's go. Let's go fight Spectre one more time. Just because Spectre's fun to pick on. Okay. Let's see what she does one more time. We're looking for Bloom Sphere, and we're basically looking for her to spam it. Spam that, even though that's not really the preferable situation for her. All right. Bloom Sphere, as expected. Uh, I didn't see anybody get charmed. Hmm. Let's see what happens turns to turn two. Okay. Aphrodite, what you got? So she did do Bloom Sphere again. So as expected, that will actually nerf Aphrodite. Because remember, with Aphrodite, you do want her to do skill two, then skill one. Uh, there is a setting for that. Let me go uh, look at this and kind of address it. But basically, you want her to get that charm off and then do the attack. So there are rare instances in which you do kind of want that. Ooh, we got charmed. That's not good at all. But you know ooh not good not good this is just a charm battle now look at this ooh look at that that should inflict oh it did not inflict charm did it not or is she already charmed uh hard to tell here does not look like she's charmed is she Ooh, and Haruhime just got charmed. So Haruhime is going down. This is going to be a big hit. Yeah, look at that. No, it came down to who charmed who. Rude! <laughs> oh, this is actually fun. This is really fun. So let's go do this one more time. So that's ailment. The ailment setting will always, always default to whatever the ailment is. In this case, with Aphrodite, it is this skill. Now... Here's the fun part about this. You need, when she charms, you actually do need then this skill. So, let's see what this is. This actually does a uh, status debuff minus two turns. And then this will do a buff. So, if I set her to balance, she'll probably do pure temptation and then bloom sphere. 
I really want Bloom's Feel and Sphere and then Temptation. Well, we actually do want this buff. Hmm. Hmm. So she does self magic. I'm willing to bet if I set her to buff, she'll do pure temptation and then bloom sphere. Maybe. Let's find out. Because she's actually an interesting situation. Okay? And I'm not 100% certain how to set her, but we're going to find out right now. So we want, we want Pure Temptation, then we want Bloom Sphere. Now that does mean that she's not really charming until turn three. I don't know if there's a way to set it so she tar charms turn one. Okay. As as expected, she did Pure Temptation. Now she should do Bloom Sphere on turn two. Let's see. And that's when she's going to start getting her charm off. Okay, she did Pure Temptation again. So she'll stick to the buff. Probably because her buff may have been removed on turn one. Um... If, if you have a unit set to buff and they get debuffed, you can get buff locked. Uh, but he's not using Lily, so probably not, in fact. That probably just means she's only going to use that skill. Look at Aphrodite's just standing there. Go, girl! Oh, no, now, now we're done. Now it's his Aphrodite versus ours. So, there you go. This is fun, though. This is, this is actually very telling about these units. So let's go find out, what do we want Aphrodite set to? All right? So we know most of these now, and we can kind of talk about the rest of them. They're, they're Like I said, they're very self-explanatory. So we've got debuff. Now, if I set her to debuff, she'll probably, because, if I go up here, because uh, Bloom Sphere does do status debuff minus two turns, it will probably just do Bloom Sphere over and over again. Um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but remember, after you do that, you definitely want to come in here with the attack. So, let's see. I really don't know what she, she should be set to. Maybe AoE? Let's just see. If we ever set to debuff, what she does. So it'll probably be just like when she's set, uh, to... Just like when she's set to ailment. Let's see. Pure Temptation. Actually, she did Pure Temptation. And then she'll do Bloom Sphere. Maybe it just lo it locks her because she doesn't really have a true debuff. I don't know. It locked her into buff. Hmm. She's never getting her charm off. That's an odd one. Okay. Okay. But I kind of get it. Since we ever set to debuff, she doesn't have a true and proper debuff. Even though she does have a status debuff down two turns. Um, it won't do that. It'll actually stick her basically into this buff lock situation. So... I actually want her fight, though. That's good news. That's very good news. So, let's go back in here, and let's try this one more time. So, debuff literally is just the opposite of buff. If they have a debuff skill, it's going to basically do uh, the debuff, and then it'll do an attack. If the debuff... Let's see, who do we have that has a good debuff? Let's see. Anybody actually have a debuff here? Let's see. Actually, you know what? She has a debuff that's also a heal. So, critical rate and penetration rate down 40% 40, uh, 40 and it's also a heal. Foes, physical resist, magic resist. So she'll basically just spam energize if she's set to debuff. Which, you actually would want tranquilize. Um, so setting her to balance is m a much better situation. I have her set to buff basically just to spam her buff skill. Uh, but also remember like... Because she, that is a heal skill, so she's probably going to do, I'd have to look, at, I'd have to double check it, but she'll probably in this setting do Tranquilize just over and over and over again. I don't think she'd ever do ener Energize. I don't have to, have to double check that, but that's the thing. So, debuff and buff, very obvious situations. Now, once again, I do want to specify, if your unit is, if you buff your unit, you have them set to buff. And let's say for the sake of argument, buff is their first skill. If in turn two, like Lily goes off or someone like that, that removes all those buffs, they're going to get buff locked. They're going to get stuck into doing the buff skill only. If you have, if it's like skill one, skill two, and you really want them to do that, that's when you like basically set a unit to balance. So I hope this makes sense. I hope this is uh, kind of addressing the situation. I'm really curious what to set her to to get skill two 
and then skill one. So we got her set to AoE. Let's see what she does here. What you got, girl? Bloom Sphere. She still did Bloom Sphere first. I don't know if there's a way to actually get her to do two and then one. I might actually have to set her to balance. I really don't know. That's such a weird situation. Hmm. Let's back out here and try that again. Because I actually didn't see what she did there. I got distracted by something. Um, let's try that one more time. And let's just see what she does. So, once again. Set to attack all. We know she does Bloom Sphere for... No! Actually, she did, she did Bloom Sphere and then Pure Temptation. Double checking, double checking. I had my skills backwards. Let's double check. Bloom Sphere and then Pure Temptation. Let's see if that's actually what she does. Okay. Now, will you do will you do Pure Temptation on turn two? I got distracted. I didn't see it last time. Let's take a look. No, she did Bloom Sphere again. So I actually don't know how to set this unit. So she does. I mean, I think really what we've got to do is we got to set her to buff, because. The one caveat to buff that I really didn't talk about here is when you have a unit set to buff and they have an extra action, it will always do the extra action first. So basically we're going to do Pure Temptation, then we're going to do Bloom Sphere. So we're always basically going to get this second skill. So really your third attack is where she's going to hit like a truck. And that actually might just be by design with her. I don't know if there's a way to actually get her to do two and then one. If you guys can think of a way to make that happen, let me know in the comments. But I really just don't think it's possible. So, once again, guys, play around with these settings. Pay close attention to what our, what our unit, units are doing. And I actually she did Pure Temptation there. What? Le what? Hold up, girl. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Let's go back here to the Spectre fight. One more time. So we're set to buff. So she's just gonna... Oh, she might have gotten buff locked. Let's see here. I don't think he'll buff lock us. I don't think so. Let's try it. Let's see what happens here. So I want to pay close attention to her buffs down there and make sure they're not getting removed at the end of turn one. So she got a lot of buffs. Buffs are still there. Buffs are not going away. So she did do pure temptation again. So even that setting's not right. So I really feel like balance is going to be the best thing for her. Which, uh, it's unfortunate because having her set to balance does mean she's not getting her big attacks off until turn three. Now, her buff is something really great that she does, but let's be real here. The best thing she's got going for her is her ailment. So, let's let her set, set her back to balance and see how she does here. Now, we did pretty well there. Not as well as I'd like to have done, but she did. we did pretty well. So, we're going to go try this one more time. And... I, just, I really don't feel like there's any way that we're going to get the extra action. Now, to be fair... To be fair, what I'm trying to do, to, in, in all fairness, and I will say, as I'm really thinking this through, there really is no reason to do two and then one, because she'd still only get her big hit on turn three. So there's no real way to get around the turn three thing. But let's see if this actually does it. So Pure Temptation, she'll do Bloom Sphere next, and then she'll probably go back and do Bloom Sphere basically until Pure Temptation runs out. Which, I mean, we're not going to go 15 turns, where we're going to go two or three. Let's see. So there's Bloom Sphere. Now, I don't know if anybody actually got Charm. Doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like we got Charm off. Charm is like the biggest thing she does. So, 
So now we basically know how to set Aphrodite. Aphrodite good. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's not so bad. It's not so bad at all. Bam. Ooh, we got charmed. We got charmed. He won it because we got charmed. Man, our healer got charmed. That is horrible, man. Horrible. So Aphrodite fun, but Aphrodite a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, if she doesn't get her charm off like mine didn't, you could pretty much call that a rip. But neither here nor there. That's why I say it's really important to sit down and actually, like, plan these things out. Because as much as, like, I've been thinking Aphrodite would be really good doing a two, uh, two to one, the reality is she still has to do one and then two. Because, so the charm at, uh, attack, the one big 120% attack, no matter what you do, isn't going to actually do anything until turn three. No matter how you, how you plan it out. Because you have to buff the skill... Then you've got to get the charm, and then you've got to get that extra attack. The extra attack would be nice. But actually, actually, more I'm thinking about it too. And I've been thinking about this completely the wrong way. Let's just go back in here to Wargame. So, the main thing with, with uh, Aphrodite. Okay? Let's look at how she's built. So, I was completely wrong about how to use her. Because remember, and I'll, I'll go ahead and, and I'll... This is how we learn, right, guys? This is how we learn. I've always been thinking, like, it'd be really good to get her ailment off first and then do this. But here's the deal. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter in which order you do this. Because she's going to buff this. She's going to get this attack off, right? So having her set to balance is best. Because she's going to do this. She's going to get all those effects. And this attack will happen after this attack happens anyway. So basically, set to balance is the fastest way for her to get... Her ailment and the big attack, because after this, after her ailment goes down, then this, then the secondary action happens. That secondary action is where she could just be absolutely deadly. So balance is a good way to set Aphrodite. I don't know why it took me this long to figure that out. I've really, actually, never sought down. Basically, since Aphrodite's been like maximum broken on my teams, I've never actually sat down and pondered how to make this happen. It literally just took me doing this video to kind of ponder that. So. And, and I mean, in hindsight, it's super common sense, but just, you know, we all overthink things sometimes. That's just how it goes. So there you go, guys. That's literally, and I, I hope that's like an active, like, I, I guess, example of how to set and how to uh, accommodate for these features. That really is the, the team settings, guys. That's it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Like, comment, share all the good stuff. And I'll be back with more Damashi really soon.